welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I'm so excited. I'm not gonna waste any time because I have four Target Dollar Spot DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Let's start off with this first one that we are gonna decorate that little decor shelf that I got from Target Dollar Spot. It was $5 and it looked like a little chair shelf type deal. So I start off with these foam eggs from Dollar Tree. Now FYI, if you do this project, pick up two packs of foam eggs. Um, now in the end, you're going to see that I did have a pack of the different kind, um, but I did need more than one pack. So just be aware of that. So I start by taking them out of the package, like I said, getting toothpicks into the bottom of them, and then painting four of each color. So four of the farmhouse green, four of the apricot Dixie Belle, and four of the buttercream Dixie Belle. You guys, this paint is so smooth. I get comments all the time. I'm so happy you're using Dixie Belle. I love the paint, things like that. So if you guys have never tried Dixie Belle, check the link in the description. I don't get anything other than they send me the paint and free products, but I just honestly truly love the product. So check them out because I know a lot of you can't get Waverly. So once I'm done painting each one, I just have a pool noodle and you guys probably hear my little Bella. She's over here saying hi to you, <laughs> but I just stick them in the pool noodle so that way they can sit upright to dry. This works if you have a piece of floral foam or anything of that nature, but I found that the pool noodle worked just fine. Once they were completely dry, I took them off of the pool noodle and off of the toothpicks. Now, I left this clipping because it's so cute. My sweet husband, it's so weird. He always has the cutest ideas and it's funny because it's literally the exact idea that I was getting ready to do. So anyway, he was just showing me his idea and I just kind of held the eggs up to my grapevine wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby just to kind of get an idea of how many eggs I would need. And this is where I kind of figure out that I probably needed some more. So at this point, it was early Saturday morning. I had no idea what I was gonna do. The kids were still asleep. So I knew that I had different eggs and I just went with it, you guys. Sometimes you just have to use what you have. It is what it is. And in the end, you can't even tell anyway. So you might just be surprised in the end. So go for it if you don't like it wait till you go out get the supplies you need and then you can redo it you know take that part off whatever the case may be so I just start by gluing my eggs all the way around the the wreath until I get to the end. I then just kind of gauge how many I'm going to need and I had the ones that are for like the Easter trees and you hang these little eggs from the faux trees. So they had strings at the ends to hang them up. So I just pulled those out. They were super easy. And then in those holes that the strings were in, I put my Q-tips in and then painted them once again. Now, if I did this over again, I would absolutely pick up the ones with the small glitter because it looks like plaster. The eggs look so cool. They have like a texture to them. So I absolutely love that look. And like I said, I would pick that up again. But if you like the just plain foam look, then pick up the ones that you personally like. I also think the chunky glitter ones would look pretty cool painted as well. So I just kind of randomly pull some. That way the ones, the textured ones weren't in a row and then it really stuck out. So I just kind of mix them up. That's my OCD <laughs> and I went with it and I absolutely love it.
So once I was done gluing down all the eggs, then the fun part came. So I honestly don't know why this part was so fun, but I just took this Spanish moss and I started off at the biggest part of my wreath, like the part that had the biggest gap. I couldn't fit another egg and you know, the space was pretty big. So I just took some Spanish moss and I kind of filled in those holes and those crevices. I really didn't want you to see any of the grapevine wreath. So the easiest way I found to do this was to stretch your Spanish Spanish moss out. And then you're just kind of gonna kind of shimmy it in between two eggs. And then the bottom part will go underneath that first and probably the next egg, it just depends. And then the other part will go the opposite direction, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to explain that over again. I do it over and over just so you guys can see the technique that I used because it worked the best. It was super easy to do and it did not take me much time to do it at all. So I'm just going to let this clip play for a little bit. That way you guys can kind of get the gist of the technique that I did to cover this entire thing. Now I did not secure in between the eggs with hot glue, but around the inside as well as the outside edges, I did make sure to use my Gorilla hot glue to ensure that those would stay in place. That way, once you have it on display, it doesn't pop out and the grapevine wreath doesn't show in any of the spots. You also want to make sure that you have something to protect your fingers. Now I've been working with hot glue a really long time and what I'm working with is um, like the low temp. So it doesn't really bother me if I put it on there and let it set up for just a second, then I can usually handle it with my hands because it's not gonna be directly onto your hands anyway, but the squeegees that I have also work wonders for that as well. So once I was done with the front, then I flip it over and go to the back and just kind of do the exact same thing, making sure that all of the wreath as well as the eggs were covered. Now I guess I cut my camera before I filmed this, or you know, yeah, before I filmed this part, but I did trim my wreath down in the middle on the edges, in the middle and on the edges as well. And then I just went in my stash and grabbed two, uh, two ribbons that I liked. I got this, you know, burlap one that's kind of see-through. And then the green buffalo check one is from Dollar Tree around Christmas time. Now I know this is not a traditional spring color, but I thought that that green just brought the colors together. I don't know, but that's my personal preference. You can let me know in the comments down below if you guys like my choice or should I have chosen something different? I don't know. But anyway, I doubled up the ribbon just by gluing them together and then I cut it down and then glue it to the top of my wreath making sure that the two pieces are glued together really nicely that way when we go to glue this down it's going to hang correctly I then take my little decor shelf out and I just glue my wreath or the ribbon I should say to the top of my little decor shelf and I just kind of push that over the edge and then glue the edge to the back as well but I don't glue that much down because I did put a jute hanger on this um, the day that I did my haul video that way I could show it to you guys hung up so I didn't want to ruin that because I knew that I could use it I didn't want to put more holes in my walls because this has two um, hangers on each side. So anyway, I did just cut that off where my jute hanger was. And then last but not least, I just glued it down to the bottom just so the wreath would sit flush with the decor shelf. And then I put that little bunny into the middle. Look how cute this turned out. But I still felt that it was missing a little something. So I doubled up that ribbon again and just made a bow and attached that to the top. 
Now the easiest way that I have found to make bows is to kind of fold it in a cancer ribbon and then pinch it in the middle and tie it off in the middle with some jute. Once I was satisfied, then I just glued that right to the top of the ribbon that was attached to my wreath. I didn't want to put it like where the eggs were, just so that way it wouldn't cover up that bunny. So I did just glue it to the top and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. But when I hung it, I felt that it was missing a little decor. So I figured I would show you a little decor piece to put on your little shelf. So in my stash I go and I pull out a terracotta pot and I just crumple up some brown paper and stick that in the bottom and then to fill in the top I put some Spanish moss laying down some hot glue first. Then with the little eggs that I had left over from our wreath I just left them in the toothpicks and I just stuck them down into the craft paper ensuring that they were in place really nicely and that they wouldn't move around. I didn't have any skewer sticks in the house which is why I used um the toothpicks i wish i had some skewer sticks and they were a little longer but there was snow on the ground and i honestly did not feel like going to the shed at like five in the morning so i just used what i had it is what it is next again to make these look a little more realistic like the eggs that i did in the, in my last video i can link that in the cards in the right hand corner if you guys didn't see it but to make these look more realistic you just take a paintbrush and I dip it in antique wax because speckles on eggs are usually like a dark brown and then you just kind of flick your brush onto your eggs and it makes the perfect speckles. And that was it, you guys. This was so quick and easy to put together. I love how everything turned out. It looks so high-end. I put one of those little bird nests that I got from Marshalls. Um, if you guys did not see my Target and little tiny Marshalls haul, um, I'll leave that in the right-hand corner as well. So let's move on to DIY number two, this super, super easy bouquet of flowers sign. So I take this square or rect, no, it's actually rectangle. I take this rectangle shiplap sign from Target Dollar Spot and I paint the first stripe with my ap apricot, apricot. How do you guys say that? Apricot? I think it's apricot. <laughs> Being, or... Yes, being very careful not to get any paint on the edges. So I just kind of pop on a show and I like to get really close. I wear glasses and even with my glasses, you guys, I feel blind. That's kind of why sometimes I'm not in the frame because I have to pull my projects closer to me. And if I point the camera closer to me, then you see my, you know, my body. And if I point it the other way, you know, it's just a mess. And I forget sometimes that I'm filming. It's really hard to film, especially when you've been crafting a long time. So it's hard to like film and craft I just forget that I'm filming and I like to bring it really close to me so that's why sometimes I'm not in frame but anyway um so I just use the three colors that I use the buttercream the farmhouse green and the, the apricot apricot I don't know how to say that so I use all three of those Dixie Bell once again skipping over the last one so that that natural wood could shine through. I then took these flowers from Dollar Tree and I did make a bouquet but it was too long and then I tried to cut it and I cut it open it was a mess. So I wanted to show you guys the proper way to do it. So cut out a square then you're going to lay your bouquet your bouquet in the corner of the square and then you're going to cut the bottom almost on like a swoop if that made no sense you could see what I did here and that's gonna give you the perfect shape for a bouquet then once you've wrapped it enough and it feels nice and you know firm 
it's the flowers aren't going to go anywhere that's my point then you can cut it off in the back and glue that down with some hot glue next i went in with some jute and originally i was just going to wrap it around a few times and just tie a shoestring bow but i did not like the way that that looked and you guys know how i am so i just tied it around knotted it in the back and glued it down to make sure that it didn't go anywhere I then made a finger bow, which I've been doing on my channel forever. I forget who taught me how to do these finger bows, but I've been doing them for even before YouTube. So I make a finger bow, and once I'm satisfied with the way that it looks, then I glue that down to the middle of the jute. Okay, I was honestly going to stop there, but I just felt that it was missing something when I laid it on my sign. Now, unfortunately, these transfers are retired. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on the new ones. I can promise you they have brand new spring minis in my chalk shop. I'll leave the link in the description box below. I just haven't had my, I haven't had my shipment yet of the new stuff, so I just kind of had to use what was on hand, um, but I found this cute little bloom and grow transfer i love the minis you can use them for tear trays so many different things um and i just took this little mini tag ornament that i got from walmart at christmas time i flipped it over on the plain side and i just transferred on the wording bloom and grow and it absolutely fit perfectly it had a black bead at the top so i've removed the black bead and then i added three unfinished wood beads to the top of my little tag. Now all that's left to do is to glue all these little pieces down. So I start by cutting the tag off at the top and gluing it like right underneath the bow. And then I glue down the tag to make sure that it doesn't flop around. And last but not least, I glue down my bouquet to the sign on like an angle. And look how realistic these flowers from Dollar Tree are. I absolutely love the way that this sign turned out. It's so spring-like and I am so excited for spring to come. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Moving on to DIY number three is this little house sign from Target Dollar Spot once again. So I just start by painting the entire front of it with my apricot Dixie Belle paint. Don't forget when you guys sign up for my Club Couture this month, you get five free transfers just for signing up. And then once you sign up, if you go in and sign in with the username and password that you used to sign up and place another $60 order, you'll get another five free transfers. Don't miss out. Check the links in the description box below. Now I know I know many many of you can paint this is for my girls who are new who are intimidated whatever don't be intimidating painting is so fun you can always redo it you can always paint over it you can never know if you if you're good at it if you don't try it so pick up the paintbrush dip it in the paint and all you have to do is just take the edge of your paintbrush up to the edge of the sign then you're just going to go in one motion towards you or, or away from you whatever feels most comfortable to you and then you'll get the hang of it once you get one light coat my husband always likes to do like a thick coat of paint I would much rather do a thin coat of paint, dry that, and then do another nice coat. Not a thin coat, not a thick coat, a nice coat to get that even coverage. Sometimes you have to do three coats, but I have found with my technique, two coats usually does the trick. So please don't be intimidated by painting. Trust me, I sell shirts down below that say, Crafting is therapy because literally crafting is my therapy and painting and certain things like this are just so therapeutic. So please just pick up a paintbrush. Don't be intimidated. I get comments all the time talking about, I love your projects, but I can never do it. So I just watch and like stuff like that. And I just wish for those of you who are intimidated would just go pick up a paintbrush or 
whatever, reach out to me. I'll send you some chalk couture. It doesn't matter because trust me when I tell you it's super easy. And once you get it, you feel good about yourself, then you want to do it over and over again. So anyway, once I have this painted and my OCD butt is satisfied, <laughs> I'm like super this my projects always take me forever because I am just like overboard with it and I try not to be I try to be really self-conscious but it just doesn't work it is what it is right anyway I take my February club couture transfer now what I love about this is you can use this any which way you want you can use it with ink to make a shirt make it permanent I've seen bags I've seen so many different things or you can use it like I'm using with the paste and you can also see how crazy I am there was this little teeny piece of hair on my transfer and it was driving me nuts so look how durable these are I pinched it I picked at it I did all the things to get this hair off and it was perfectly fine so I wanted my wording to be a little bit differently than it was on the sign so I'm just gonna let this play and let you guys see how I made mine Last year, around the same time, I made a sign. It said Better Together, and it was like one of those double bicycles. I forget what they're called. It's right on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, um, everybody fell in love with that sign, so I knew everybody would love this one. I think it's so cute. It says, Take the Long Way Home, and Enjoy the Ride, and I just love that saying because it's so true. Sometimes, or it says finding the joy in the journey. Good Lord, help me, Melissa. I knew that. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to say like this day and age with the internet and Amazon and like everything so quick, quick, quick. I think we forget to take the long way home. We're so quick to get here, there and everywhere. We're so quick to do this and quick to do that, that we just don't stop to smell the roses. And I've been really conscious about that because life just goes by so fast that you blink and like it's over and it's hard to like realize that in the moment but I'm realizing that more and more watching these kids grow you know <laughs> anyway so when I transferred on the find the joy in the journey the find it and transfer on right no big deal I just washed it these are reusable upwards of like 50 uses as long as you take care of them and I just stirred my paste really good lay, laid it back down laid the transfer back down and repasted over and it looks perfectly fine once I was done with all my wording and my paste and my transfers then I took out my leather white ribbon from Dollar Tree I made a simple bow now I wish I had something different it kind of didn't sit right with the greenery I don't know you guys can let me know what you think if you think I did good or if I should have switched the ribbon I don't know maybe I felt like I should have put the bike at the top and then like the wording up more and the greenery at the bottom with the bow I don't know you guys I always second guess myself I always wish I would have changed it but it is what it is I glued some greenery down to either side of the bow nonetheless I still love the way that it turned out it goes with all my other stuff you guys know I'm matchy matchy I like to make like sets of something it just looks more appealing right so so anyway you guys that was it for this sign I love the way that it turned out like I said that color apricot I just am falling in love with that more and more so let me know in the comments down below per usual which project is your fave Okay friends, DIY number four, last but not least, these little mini houses from Target Dollar Spot. And I start off with my farmhouse green, stirring it up really good. Next, I paint one farmhouse green, again, one with my buttercream, and wow, you guys guessed it, one with the apricot Dixie Belle paint. Now I did be sure to be really careful around those chimney pieces. Now on a few of them, I think the white one, I got the chimney, but 
I was okay with them being a little rustic, so it didn't bother me much, but I did give them distressed coats of the paint. No, you're not crazy. I left that in because I tried to do that cute little transition and I thought I was so cute and <laughs> I messed up the colors. I started with the white and the apricot and then when I flipped the camera back on to do the second part of the transition, <laughs> I totally got the colors wrong, but whatever you guys get it i painted them all and dried them next i go in with my house pattern cutouts the greenery part i can't get enough of it i just love it it looks so cute and these flowers are so cute too and i want to put these in my girl's room once i'm done anyway because their room is like a peachy pink color and i'm gonna do it in like the boho theme i think so I thought these would look super cute in there. So I did kind of go with the colors that I want to do their room in. So on the farmhouse green one, obviously I transferred on that little greenery with my white paste. And then on the apricot one, I went in with the flowers, obviously with white flowers. I did the greenery with my eucalyptus chalk paste. And then for the other flowers, I used dune. For the white little house, this one was super easy. I just dry brushed some antique wax all over the house and then I glued one of these little bird nests down that I got from Marshalls, again, in my haul. Um, I just glued that right down to the middle. Now there were two different kinds in the box. I don't know if I mentioned that in my haul. There was kind of a smaller nest um, with just the outer part and then there was a kind of bigger nest with more of like a hay on the inside of like it was kind of layered if that makes sense I don't know if that makes sense but it was layered the bigger one did not fit right on here so I did just use the smaller one and then to hide that bottom piece once again I used some Spanish moss and I just kind of pulled it apart arranged it around the edge to where it looked nice and then I kind of pulled it lightly away hot glued it and then pushed it back into place To finish this little house off, all I did was once again trim that down just to make it look more uniform. Now you don't want it to look perfect because a bird's nest is nowhere near perfect, but you do want it to look at least a little put together if you know what I mean. Moving on to the next house, now we're just dressing them all up. I take some jute and wrap it around the top of my farmhouse green greenery house. I secure some hot glue in the back and cut that down and then I make a triple jute bow once again using my finger bow technique. Now again I felt like it was missing a little something so I just strung a few beads on the end of some jute and then I kind of put it not put it cut it down pretty short that way I could get these as close to that bow as possible so once I did that I just secured it down with some hot glue and I wanted this one to be more neutral and plain so this one I just left alone once I was done with the beads now moving on to our last little house all I did was cut another one of those mini transfers Again, I'm sorry you guys can't get your hands on this one. I wish I had my new stuff, but it is what it is. Um, you just got to pick up and move on, you know. So I wish, I so wish that I would have transferred that word on spring with my white paste. But I didn't. I went in with my black and I forgot to stir up my paste and I pushed down a little too hard so it did bleed a little bit but that's okay it's no big deal it doesn't look too bad um and then I still felt because the rest of my little house was um there was no more black in the sign I felt like it needed something a little extra so all I did was take that little bird and I transferred him on right in the right hand corner
Last but not least, I took my chip brush and some antique wax and I just dry brushed all of my little houses very lightly. I didn't want it to be like a heavy coat, but just a very light coat on all the houses. Look how amazing these turned out. I love every single project in this video. Please let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. I'm always curious to hear from you guys in the comments and I love to hear you guys um, let me know which was your favorite because usually everybody's pretty different. Also, I just wanna thank you guys from the bottom of my heart from all the amazing comments and stories in my last video. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that I can be myself and you guys will accept me for who I am. So with all that being said, if you, not, if you have not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already, like I said. Share this with your family and friends because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help you YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And as always, you guys, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning, amazing, and gorgeous. You are worthy. Pick up a paintbrush. Try it. If you are scared, don't worry about it. You can always try again. I love you guys with all my heart and soul, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.